zwar von Sunny V2, Digga, ehrlich ein guter YouTuber, Bruder. 4 Millionen Abonnenten, Bruder, das war schon ein Jahr her, da war er noch ein bisschen kleiner. Ähm, er macht immer mal Videos von irgendwelchen ähm, einfach bekannten Personen, Rappern, YouTubern oder so, Digga, was mit dem mittlerweile passiert ist. Oder bei gerade bei so Rappern, ähm, die sehr weirde Tode haben, sage ich mal, äh, vielleicht auch sehr jung gestorben sind, zeigt auch nochmal die letzten Stunden dieser Leute. Ne? Wir gehen rein in das Video The Final 27 Hours of Juice World. This would be the call that unfortunately marked the end of Juice World's life. Just hours prior, he was seen on Instagram joking around and having fun with his entourage in a private jet en route to Chicago. However, whilst on board, the relaxed environment would transform into a state of panic after Juice World also learned that, according to the original leaked case incident report, members of the Gang Investigation Federal Task Force were waiting for them to land at the airport so they could conduct a cannabis slash weapons investigation. How did law enforcement know that Juice World would be carrying a also wollten sie, bevor er überhaupt gestorben ist, wollten sie ihn aus dem Flugzeug basten, dafür, dass er Gras und Waffen dabei hat. Landing. Did it have something to do with his girlfriend's meth trafficking charge from two years prior? Or the death of another Chicago rapper from only six days beforehand? Was his death a result of trying to avoid jail time upon landing? Or simply an unexpected overdose? Jetzt fahr ich Porsche Cayman S. Porsche Cayman S, Jungs! Jawohl, ja! Ich hab's geschafft, Tricks. Ist keine Jungfrau mehr. <lacht> Chill mal deinen Arsch, Junge, du bist ja Wichser. Kuss geht raus für den Stop im vierten Monat. Du Arschloch, der hat sogar zwei in Folge mittlerweile. Didi, Macher, Digga, du weißt, der fünfte Monat ist der wichtigste. Äh, also ganz kurz zum Juice World Tod, Digga, ist auf jeden Fall insane, als ich das damals erfahren habe, Bruder. Äh, ich muss auch ganz ehrlich sagen, ich habe halt seine Musik erst lieben gelernt, ganz ehrlich, nach seinem Tod, ne? Ähm, davor war schon immer so auf dem Plan, da hat man eins in eins in den Songs gehört, aber danach wurde das alles natürlich ein bisschen mehr. Ähm, ich muss ganz ehrlich sagen, ich weiß halt überhaupt nichts über seinen Tod. Ne? Ich weiß nur, dass er halt an einer Überdosis anscheinend gestorben ist. Was da überhaupt passiert ist und wie, Digga, weiß ich nicht. Aber ich kann mir überhaupt nicht vorstellen, was jetzt hier gerade steht. Von wegen, er hat einfach ein paar Pillen geschluckt, Digga, damit er nicht äh, bei der, von der Polizei gehoppt wird, Digga. Warum ist der fünfte der wichtigste? Weil das ist der nächste ist, den du bezahlst. Kuss geht aus, die dental time possible. Some conspiracy theories posit that Juice World isn't even dead at all, some of which being supported by a surprising amount of evidence. Regardless, one thing was for certain as outlined in the Ganz kurz, Chat, oder auch an die Leute auf YouTube, meint ihr, dass Juice World das alles nur gefaked hat? Original Case Incident Report. At the time of his death, Juice World, aka Jared Higgins, was a heavy Percocet user and, quote, had a drug problem. He tried lean for the first time in the sixth grade after listening to Future's 2011 mixtape Dirty Sprite One with Digga, sechste Klasse, das erste Mal lean? Da ist man so elfs hört. Juice stating, what do you expect if I'm a young dude that really loves music, really looks up to these artists? I didn't have a man giving me no type of guidance. My father wasn't in my life like that. So listening to this grown ass man rap about lean, I'm like, well, that sounds really appealing. You always had issues uh, with drugs even before you started to get famous and uh, rich. Yeah, yeah. Also weird jetzt Adam 22 da nochmal zu sehen, wo dann nach den ganzen Sachen die letzte Zeit rausgekommen sind, ne? Aber der hat damals mit die besten Interviews gebracht, muss man ganz einfach sagen. Also gerade mit so Artistiker, die noch gar keiner kannte, ne? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was something that I was into early, low-key, due to music. The second song I've ever heard about Future, Dirty Sprite. Like, the, for off the first Dirty Sprite mixtape, had me wanting to sip lean at like 11, 12 years old, bro. Two to three years later, Juice found himself getting involved with harder substances. I ran into some Percocets my freshman year, 14, 15 years old, 13, 14. However, despite showing his knowledge about how bad these drugs were, Juice was unable to stop his addiction your mind could be telling you hell no but um your body is dependent so it's like it, it, it could tell you it's apart. a battle his music often referenced needing to take these substances as a coping mechanism for what his girlfriend explained to be an anxious overactive fast-paced mind being so famous with access to such a large pool of money also seemed to influence juice world's drug problem do you feel like you fell into that trap though as like as you started to get money and stuff you just started to do more and more drugs and kind of let it get bad yeah, i would say i guess somewhat while in a different instagram live stream He'd state that money did almost nothing to fix the problems that had caused his drug addiction in the first place. I deal with anxiety and, and, uh, and depression just because you got money. Money is the answer to certain problems, but it is not the answer to, to those type of problems. In the months leading up to his death, Juice's drug problem appeared to have gotten worse. We calculated it up and it was like over 20 pills a day he was doing. 20 percent a day? Yeah. Juice's recording engineer Max Lord would state in a GQ interview, we were all starting to be on his case a lot more about the 
amount of pills he was taking. He was hiding and compartmentalizing how much he was doing with different people. He'd come into the studio room and act like he hasn't gotten high at all that day and do a certain amount in there before I tell him, bro, no chill. Then he was going upstairs and hanging out with the guy. Against closely, does he? Guys and doing the same thing would then go on to state, I and a couple other people had come to him in tears like, we're worried about you and we're scared we're going to lose you if you keep up these habits and we have to do something. Which led to Juice World agreeing to attend rehab, which was scheduled to begin on the 22nd of December 2019, mm. two weeks after he would board the flight going. that would ultimately lead to his death. Jay was supposed mm. to go to rehab that month. We tried so hard to do positive things every day like ride dirt bikes or paintball to keep busy and not do pills, but every night once he hit the studio, that was it. He loved it. With all this in mind, it's hardly surprising to hear that when Juice World and his eight person entourage would pull up to the plane, they were carrying an otherworldly amount of illegal narcotics. The group had shown up to the chartered private jet over three hours late, according to Flight Aware's plane tracker. However, during the Into the Abyss Juice World HBO show, his cousin Sean Bailey would state that they were actually six hours late before going on to mention that the pilot was in a foul mood as a result of the delay. The advantage of chartering a private jet is that once everyone is inside the plane, you can take off instantly. There's no waiting around, as is the case with a commercial flight. However, after the group boarded the plane located in Van Nuys, California. They sat around for approximately 15 minutes without leaving, stating that something felt off. The pilot was acting weird, the, st the stewardess lady was acting weird, and I just didn't feel, I just felt something off. I got up to like, yo, we should leave. You know what I mean? Like, I got up and walked to the door and then like, Crazy. to see if the cars were still there. And I'm like, because I was gonna be like, yo, let's just get off this plane right yeah. now. Like, something's not right. The details are foggy, but this seems to have been the time during which the pilot of the flight notified law enforcement in Chicago about the contraband on board. This thing goes in delay. This move has since proven to be incredibly controversial online, with rappers such as Boosie as well as Juice's girlfriend claiming that the pilot snitching had resulted in Juice's eventual death. I've lost two of the most important people in my life because of snitches. However, others such as this lawyer on Twitter stated, the pilot was trafficking drugs and guns involuntarily and wanted to go home to his family. This is in no way his fault, children. There are multiple Reddit posts arguing about whether or not the pilot is in the wrong, so it's probably best approached by drawing your own conclusion. However, all of this is still assuming that the Ja, was meint ihr? Meint ihr, der Pilot ist die Snitch, Digga, oder was? Weil er da im Endeffekt ähm, Polizeibescheid gesagt hat, dass da vielleicht Waffen und Drogen drin sind. Also ich denke schon, dass er eine Snitch ist, Digga, weil im Endeffekt, das ist ein drei Stunden Flug und danach bist du dann mit den Leuten. Ob du da ankommst oder nicht, ne? Von wegen sagt er ja gerade, ja, nicht, dass er dafür äh, zu irgendwelchen äh, Konsequenzen gezogen wird, weil er ist ja der Pilot. Oder wenn die Leute dir das Zeug mitnehmen, was hat der Pilot damit zu tun? Das wird auch jedes Gericht genauso entscheiden. Das ist, also er ist auf jeden Fall eine Snitch, Digga, auf jeden Fall. The pilot was the one who notified law enforcement in the Digga, hatte mal genau das gleiche, als wir damals in äh, Holland waren, Digga, und äh, wir haben uns extra einen Fahrer dafür besorgt, das war ein Kollege von meiner Cousine. Ich denke mal, der wollte hitten, Digga, aber der war halt einfach Friends Zone. Und äh, wir sind da rumlaufen, die Sache war alles cool, aber in dem Moment, wo wir dann wegfahren wollten, haben wir uns extra nochmal jeder 5 Gramm gekauft, nochmal von extra. Wir hatten die ganze Zeit noch was auf Tasche, Digga, aber das hat er nicht gesehen. Dann hat der komische Fahrer das gesehen, dass wir die 5 Gramm noch mitnehmen wollten, und dann sagt er, ja, ja, äh, dann müsst ihr euch aber an den anderen Fahrer oder müsst ihr euch ein anderes Fahrzeug oder Fahrmöglichkeit mit nach Hause nehmen. Ich gehe auch an. Ich sage, was ist bei dir? Digga, wenn du mich jetzt hier nicht fahren willst, dann bist du der Einzige, der in Holland bleibt, Digga. Ich fahre mit meinen meine Freunden und meiner Familie nach Hause, Junge. Was denkst du denn, weil ich, wer du bist, Junge? Ja, dann ist er auch am Ende gefahren, Digga, weil ich ihn halt wirklich klar gemacht habe, wenn er jetzt sagt, von wegen, ja, ich fahre ich nicht mehr, dann fahre ich halt einfach alleine. Was ist denn, was, der, wen hat er im Kopf gekauft, Junge? The first place. There's no confirmation of this in the official police report. Weil ich finde in diesen Situationen gerade diese Menschen, der Pilot oder mein Fahrer oder so, können auch einfach vornherein Bescheid sagen, wenn es ihnen irgendwie unangenehm ist, sowas, Digga. Ne? Und nicht dann nachhinein, wenn dann Leute ankommen und sowas, oh, ist ja alles komisch, also weiß ich nicht, weiß ich meine. Da kann man alles vorher erklären. Other theories posit the law enforcement plan on searching Juice's jet as only five days prior, the FBI had arrived in Chicago to investigate a gang-related murder of another rapper going by the name of Shooter Shells. Shooter Shells had released a diss track just prior to his death aimed at a rival gang distantly related to Juice World's record label. So it is possible that the searching of Juice's jet had been a result of suspected Digga, das ist halt auch so ein Reinschiss, dass die ganzen Leute in irgendeiner Gang-Activity verbunden sind, ne? Alle von dem, Bruder. Ich weiß, dass es das in Amerika ist, das ist gar nicht anders möglich, so, wenn du äh, so aus diesen Community kommst. Bruder, das ist halt auch kompletter Müll, ne? Dadurch leben die halt auch zehnmal gefährlicher, als es eigentlich hätten sein müssen. Ne, aber gut, natürlich gehst du nicht als Kind davon aus, wenn du in so einer Gegend aufwächst, dass du halt direkt ein Star wirst und gibst dich natürlich einfach mit so einen Leuten ab, ne? Damit du, weißt ja auch deine Freunde sind in dem Moment, so will ich ja gar nicht sagen. 
gang activity, considering the official police report does mention that the search was for cannabis slash weapons. Regardless of the motive behind the search, one thing was for sure. The agents weren't leaving Chicago airport until the plane had been searched in its entirety, which would be relayed to those on the plane as they flew toward Chicago. Everything was normal and everything was fine. And once we started getting closer to Chicago and we started getting service on our phones, our security guard, Hen, texted the group chat and was basically like, cops are here and they have a dog. This would be the point at which Juice World took an unspecified but assumed high quantity of Percocet pills. The motive for this, according to the popular main. Warte mal, das steht wirklich fest, dass er dann sich einfach eine, eine große Menge an Perks reingeballert hat, oder was? Stream media narrative was so Juice could avoid drug charges upon landing. And while this idea makes sense as a surface level theory, many prominent individuals believe it to be incorrect and fabricated to make the story more interesting when mm. reported. For example, Chris Long, Juice's videographer, who had been a part of the entourage on the final plane ride, took to Twitter stating, Jay did not swallow a bunch of pills because ah, the police okay, were at the fine. airport. Das haben die offiziellen Stellen gesagt, aber die Leute, die dabei waren, sagen was anderes. Gave no Fs about them being there. He could have flushed them down the toilet if he cared. Jay was just ah, hooked okay. bad. The amount he took daily was absurd, and he hid how much he took from mostly everyone. Everyone around him tried really hard to get him to slow down. When he agreed to rehab, it was because he wanted to lower his tolerance. He didn't want to stop. Oh, Juice ah, knew the cops geez. were coming, so took a handful of pills, and like, that's not what happened. I'm like, Juice did drugs, yes. You know what I mean? But he didn't try to hide them, or he knew he wasn't going to get in trouble. He had people around him. That are going to take care of. Other individuals furthered this claim, such as Adam22 from the No Jumper podcast, who had been close with Juice World in the lead up to his death. I wonder to what extent that story is maybe different. It seems kind of so silly to just take a bunch of pills when it's like, if you were really getting busted with a bunch of illegal stuff, a handful of perks is not going to make a dent in the case. Perhaps yeah. Juice took a high dosage to alleviate his anxiety, knowing that he was probably going to be arrested after landing. Alternatively, maybe he knew oh, yeah. he was headed to jail for the night as a result of the other stuff on board and was taking an extra high dosage to avoid withdrawal later. Whatever the motive happened to be, the pills had been taken and there was no going back. After landing in Chicago at 1.30 a.m., the group would embark from the plane before taking a seat in the empty private jet terminal. According to the official case incident report, a police canine dog then entered lobby, began search, and immediately indicated a positive alert on a suitcase on the first cart. The dog then left and re-entered lobby for search of second cart. Canine immediately alerted on a suitcase on the second cart. Upon opening the first bag, Arrows discovered a large amount of vacuum sealed green leafy substance, suspected cannabis, and when they say large amount, they mean large amount. Juice World and his entourage had packed a total of 70 pounds of cannabis into their suitcases <laughs> in preparation for Juice's birthday, which had been scheduled for the night after he would die. Oh, Digga, was? Is das frech? Die haben ihn einfach mit, was weiß ich, 35 Kilo oder so hops genommen, Digga. Fuck. 70 pounds? Was sind das? 30, 20, 30 Kilo? Ach, das geht auch ein Bruder, ja. ja. Wenn ihr irgendwelche Sachen noch habt zum Quatschen von wegen, ne, wer wie was da war, Digga, könnt ihr gerne am Ende der Reaction machen, ne? This weekend we're going to Chicago to celebrate his birthday. It was just his birthday the other day, um, but we're going this weekend, Saturday. Uh, we're flying out there. We're gonna uh, have a birthday party with his mom and family and friends and stuff like that from out there, so. However, the sheer amount of substances held by the group has spawned a list of alternate theories about why they had been transporting such a high quantity in their luggage. One theory which, to be fair, sounds a little far-fetched is that the drugs were for Juice World's girlfriend to sell after they had arrived in Chicago, the theory having come about after a user named Squirt Reynolds would tweet, Ali Lottie, Juice World's girlfriend before he passed, is a high-profile drug dealer and may have contributed to him passing away, a thread which contained a document showing that Ali had apparently been to court in 2017 for the importation of methamphetamine. Ali would respond to the tweet by stating, never seen methamphetamine ever, and I'm pretty sure methamphetamine is Adderall's. Ah ha ha, again. This paperwork has nothing to do with me. I'm sorry, ah ha ha ha, I don't even know the lawyer, ah ha. Bah ha ha, I don't even know bro, ah ha ha. This has nothing to do with me, look it up, look into it, ha 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 ha. I can't help ya, I ain't losing sleep over it, ah ha ha. <laughs> The problem with this theory is that when you read the legal documents a little more carefully, it states the defendant is hereby committed to the custody of the United States Bureau of Prisons to be yeah, did he go better when he is case? In prison for a term <laughs> of 30 months. If Ali Lodi had been convicted to a 2.5 year sentence in August 2017, how was she posting photos of herself outside in late 2017 when she was supposed to be in prison? A 2.5 year prison sentence beginning in August 2017 would also imply that Ali Lodi's entire relationship with Juice World took place while she was behind bars, which clearly wasn't the case. Under the oh. assumption that this meth trap. Ah, alles klar, das hat einfach von irgendwen anders.
trafficking charge was for another Alicia Leon, therefore being bogus and Fixed. irrelevant. Let's go back to the day on which Juice World would die. Whilst waiting in the empty private jet terminal, as the police were uncovering the concealed drugs, during the search, Jared A. Higgins, aka Juice World, began to have a medical emergency. It appeared that Higgins was suffering from a seizure. Aros asked of Higgins if he suffered from any medical issues and if he had ingested any drugs. Leon related that Higgins did not have any medical conditions and that Higgins takes Percocet and has a drug problem. As a result, police would administer two shots of Narcan to stop the overdose. However, the rest of the group would go on to state that it didn't seem like the police cared about the fact that Juice was having a seizure. It seemed like all the cops there just didn't give a shit. Like they sat there very nonchalantly and like Ali's screaming to call 911. Following the realization that Juice World was overdosing, he'd be rushed to the Advocate Christ Medical Center before being pronounced dead at 3.14 a.m. with the autopsy ruling the cause and manner of death to be oxycodone and codeine toxicity slash accident. Oh, and while this would tragically mark the end of Juice World's life, it would begin a string of conspiracy theories which put forward the idea that Juice World wasn't really dead. I may sound crazy, but please listen up. I don't believe Juice World's dead. Here's why. Those who believe the conspiracy reference tweets such as this one from 2017, which read, My goal is to get overly famous, shine for a couple years, then fake my death. In the song Legends, Juice would write, What's the 27 club we ain't making up past 21? Which was certainly interesting considering Juice had died only six days after his 21st birthday. This was accompanied by him mentioning that he felt like John Lennon in the song All Girls Are The Same, which many considered to be further evidence for the conspiracy since they both died on the same day of the year. December 8th. In addition to this, an artist by the name of Clever, who'd collaborated with Juice World in the past, would release an album titled Crazy in early 2021, with the first letter of each song on the album spelling out the sentence, Juice World is alive. alive. So if he wasn't dead, where had he gone? Well, the main theory is that Juice World's currently the evidence, Digger. That's what me over in is enough, thing. Living in the Bahamas. This theory began after he posted a photo in October 2019 on Instagram of a private jet with the numbers N999EH. By tracking the plane, it can be seen that instead of flying from LA to Chicago on the date of Juice's death, it instead flew to Nassau in the Bahamas. However, the problem with this conspiracy is that the N999EH jet was more than likely a rental jet owned by a charter company, meaning that it could have been anyone flying to the Bahamas on the day that Juice died. It's probably important not to give these conspiracy theories too much attention as the ludicrousy of them could probably be seen as disrespectful to those who had to witness Juice's unfortunate past. Nee, heute noch Reactions, Bruder. Ne? Heute bin ich durch, Alter. Hast du gesehen, die tut gerund, ne? Die waren ja wirklich nicht mehr, konntest du nicht antun. Sing. And the emotion shared by those in his inner circle is almost certain evidence for his tragic death at 3.14 a.m. on the 8th of December 2019. Ja, wirklich schade, dass er so früh von uns gegangen ist. Einer der krassen Künstler, jungen yeah, Hip-Hop-Künstler, die wir hatten hier. This so wie X, wie Le Peep, wie Juice WRLD. Echt schade, dass er so früh vor uns gegangen ist. Aber ey, das ist... Ja, da muss man sich wirklich seine eigene Meinung bilden. Und wirklich herauskommen wird es wahrscheinlich eh nie. Ne? Also ich denke nicht, sollte Juice WRLD da wirklich sich irgendwie abgesetzt haben, dass er irgendwann nochmal in das Spotlight kommt. Werde ich nicht denken. Ich denke auch nicht, dass es da irgendeinen Beweis dann für geben wird. Ich denke mal, der wird das schon so gemacht haben, dass der da niemals gefunden werden wird. Ähm, ja, oder sollte er tot sein, kann man sich auch nie hundertprozentig sicher sein. Nur wegen diesen Anschuldigungen schon alleine.